Okay, we are modifying this Powermatic 75 dust collector, single stage, and we're going to add a Thane uh, baffle to each side of it, along with a diverter for uh, clean out of uh, wind environmental uh, filters. So on the left you can see that's pretty much the original setup. It's a cloth bag on top with a plastic bag on the bottom to collect the debris. The top is probably a 5 micron uh, cloth and the rest of it goes in the air. So I'm trying to clean that up and I'll show you a little bit of my initial mock-up on the right side. Okay, so we're still on this 75 Powermatic dust collector. This right hand side you can see I've begun the Thane Baffle addition along with the diverter box that I have mentioned earlier. What I'm going to show you is just a quick overview of the construction details. I'm not going to give you measurements. Um, that's going to need to be tailored to your individual machine, but this can be done I believe with any single stage collector. This one has an 8 inch outlet pipe should say that's an inlet pipe coming in from the machines and then it splits off into these two boxes um, square uh, outlets from the blower that go into the baffle housing and then on the top I have a six inch outlet which is going to be up into the wind filter and again I'll show you those details in a moment Okay, what I've gone and done is to remove that housing off of the machine and I'm going to show you basically what we're going to do with it. This is the baffle that comes with it and you can see the dust would come in around and drop down and then the lighter particles would go back up into the filter or in that case the bag. So what we're going to do is to mount the wind filter on top of this surface and I've made a plate which is a piece of round pine that Home Depot had and it happens to be pretty heavy stock, it's five quarter material. Um, you have to pick through it to make sure that they're relatively flat and uh, that they're not split. Um, but that's what I've used for all of the components here, except for um, some smaller uh, MDF pieces that I made to reinforce um, some other pieces that I have, which I'll show you. Um, so this is going to mount up top here, and then there will be a piece of uh, a six inch pipe that comes up and out um, down below. I made up a fitting here, a bell mouth, turn this on my lathe, and all it is is a bunch of segmented pieces which I've glued together, and then I just turned it out on the lathe. I had a face mount, and then in here, just came around and I smoothed that out just by eye. So, um, you know, it, it should help to uh, lessen the intake of larger pieces. That's uh, the hope anyway. Uh, in the back, it's been flush trimmed, so the stove pipe will fit into it. And that will sit down underneath. And then the stove pipe will go down into it and be epoxied in. Okay, so what I've gone is done and flipped that over. And now I'm going to show you the components that I'm going to use to attach this to the baffle. So what I made was a split ring which will enable me to slide this over here. And then I have a separate ring, which is again that five-quarter pine material, 
This just happens to be a 24 inch diameter. Um, so I cut out my piece from that 24 inch diameter disc. I've got a groove routed in here and a chamfer uh, to allow everything to slide along a little better. Um, the groove obviously is for some Lexan uh, material that will mount in there. So that ring sits atop that. And then this ring will be glued and pin nailed to attach it temporarily until that glue sets. There will also be foam gasket material in here, which will seal that up, make it airtight. Next is the Lexan piece, fits in the groove. It's about four inch material. You could obviously make that whatever height you want. In this case, I already have quite a bit of distance in this baffle. You consider that it goes all the way from this point here, and then it's going to be right up about here. Put on the other piece, you can see that's quite a depth to that baffle overall. So this, again, is one of those 24-inch um, rounds. Again, using Mr. Thane's design. Um, I did make a couple of changes here, very minor. Um, I used a hole saw for the entry, and I sloped that slightly. And then I also had some uh, metal brackets left over from another project, which happened to have a little curve to them. And the hope there is that that will help draw particles down into that void and just the same on the outcome on the other side there's a sloping hole going the opposite direction along with a little piece of metal there that bracket going the opposite direction as well trying to pull material down in and then on the underside I've got an MDF ring that's been routed and shaped to fit the underside of this. Um, I haven't quite determined how I'm going to attach uh, this to either a barrel um, or to a uh, bag. And in the case of the bag, my um, metal banding that formerly held the bags on the machine uh, are too short because the diameter of this ring is quite a bit larger than the original one. Uh, so I may modify those or I may um, get a different setup. So again, not quite sure of that. Um, so for now, that's what I have and I'm going to keep going with it. I'll give you another update shortly. Okay, what I've done is turn this again on its side. So I'm going to apply that gasketing material to this flange in order to uh, get that split ring and the other larger ring to come together to make a tight seal. So I'm going to apply this gasketing, which is just foam gassing, gasketing like a urethane um, that's very soft and pliable. I'm going to apply it around this ring, go all the way around. doesn't require too much care, really just to get it to the right place. Um, a little bit one way or the other is not going to make a difference.
chamfer on the underside of that split ring, which is MDF material, will sit right on this, and that'll form a nice tight seal. So now we'll get the larger of the two rings. as well. And just in case so any other gasket and came loose, come back and put it back where it's supposed to be. Quite a bit of it to come loose. 